Richardson Hitchens, Diego Pacheco, Sky Nicholson, Galau Yafai. These fighters are no longer the next generation. They're all on the verge of greatness, ready to write their names in the history books of professional boxing. For Richardson Hitchens, out to prove himself as an elite 140 pounder in the hottest division in the sport. So if somebody shut me up, I'm gonna keep talking the same way I talk. Diego Pacheco, the 20 and 0 knockout sensation, ready to become 168 pound world champion. Everything I say doesn't mean shit, but you guys will see when I fight what I'm about. Sky Nicholson, female boxing's next global star. We'll see if it even goes the distance. Galau Yafai, Olympic gold medalist, ready to make history in the professional code. On April the 6th, every fighter's dream, Las Vegas. The new era of boxing superstars get the chance to continue their journey to greatness. For Richardson Hitchens, in the hottest division in boxing, he gets his chance to earn a world title shot. A final eliminator against Argentina's Gustavo Lemos puts him in line for Subriel Matias and a shot at the IBF world title. Popping some bottles and shit, but you can't drink. You heard we're gonna be popping some bottles for you. You can't yeah, drink. Yeah, yeah. You can have a little zip. <laughs> it's lit, it's lit. Let it go get zooted off that wine, right, ladies? Oh, you getting fucked up. I drank some tequila one time. I had the This fight is for the IBF eliminator to secure a spot for a world title opportunity, so it's a big fight. But he's gonna realize when he get in there, he's in there with a whole different type of uh, caliber of fighter. There's levels to this, and I really believe that. This guy, I don't respect his records. I don't respect who he fought. I don't respect nothing he's done in boxing, so I gotta show him that he's out of his league this fight. I feel like when you got the skills that I got, you can talk as much shit you want. Fuck Devin Haney. Everybody know Regis is a bum. Everybody knew Cambos was a lick. So if somebody shut me up, I'm gonna keep talking the same way I talk. Like the activity, the structure, the, that was missing in, in my career. Once I got with Matchroom, everything that I was looking for in my career just came into fruition. And now we're here, like you said. My second headliner in just six months, and we're closing into a world title. It's just a blessing. And just the fans seeing my talent, what I've been trying to show the world for some time now. You see when I did my last fight, a guy that been at the world stage for as long as we know, he getting there with a guy that was calling a prospect in Richardson Hitchens, and he got dominated. One judge giving Jose Zapata just one round. It was a shutout. I can make a good fight and look ordinary. I can make a, a, a great fight and look good. Like, it's just some shit that people got. And I just feel like I'm better than the rest of them guys. Oh, some good work. A lot of punches being thrown, too. It wasn't 14 rounds of defense. That was 14 rounds of fighting. I know I'm bad. Like when I say I'm bad, I know I'm bad. I, I can talk as much as I want because cause ain't nobody gonna do shit about it. They I, I can back it up. So that's just, that's just what it is. I don't even think Lemos even fought nobody. I even know how to throw a jab to be honest when I watch his, his past tape. So I think when he getting in there with me, it's, it's, it's gonna fuck his head up. It's gonna be like, damn, like I'm in here with a master boxer and, and, and I'm gonna make easy work of him. I want the fans to tune in. It's going to be an exciting fight, but it's going to be a massacre. I really don't see the fight going the distance. With a big win, that'll put me in place to fight for the IBF championship. I think that fight with me and Sabrina Matias would be a huge fight for the 140 division. Let's just get past Gustavo Lemos, and after that, we can talk about that fight for sure. I'll fight any, any one of the champions. Soon, I'll be one of the faces of the division and eventually one of the faces of the sport. Time. Nine. Woo. You got yourself in a little bit of a back and forth on Twitter recently, didn't you, with a certain Devin Haney? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah fact. Where did that come from? Is that, is that genuine beef though? How did that, how did that come about? Devin Haney's a bitch. That's fact. She's a bitch. It started off because one time a fan tweeted, "Oh, I think Richardson Hitchens is the better fighter," and I said, "I am." He want to take it and say, "Oh." I'm hating on him and such and such. I'm not hating on on uh, on Devin Haney. That's first and foremost. He's a, he can fight, but before uh, Cambosis, he, he caught a lick. Everybody knew Cambosis was a lick. Fought Lomachenko, 
in a, in, a, in, a, in a sweat, in a fight that was super close. If he was a true champion, he would have given Lomachenko his rematch. That's what he should have did. But he ran up and fought Regis Progre. Everybody know Regis is a bum. Devin knows that. People that have been in the ring with Regis, Spar knows that. I know that. I understand the business part of it. So, of course, go pick on Ryan Garcia. Go pick up that easy check. And then he's at 140. He has, like I said, he have a great relationship with Eddie. Why not, if I'm hating, if I'm this and I'm all that, why not come shut me up? Give me an opportunity at the, at the belt. I'm ranked number two for the WBC. If not, give the belt up. Let me and Santa Martin handle our business. And then that way, me and, when me and Matias face off, that could be a, 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 a even a bigger fight, a unification fight. Because Devin Haney don't want to fight me or Matias. Fuck Devin Haney. This is my division, man. This is the Richardson Hitchens division. This is the Richardson Hitchens era. This is, this is just my time. Them boys got to step out the way. I'm here, and I'm just knocking at their door. That's it. I'm just here. The journey continues for Diego Pacheco, one of the biggest stars in world boxing. A 168-pound wrecking ball looks to go 21-0 with a big KO in Sin City. I've just always been a power puncher, you know, ever since I was 12, 13, 14, I was always dropping guys to the body, to the head. You better move, you might get knocked out. Knocked out. You better move, you might get knocked out. Knocked out. I feel that I'm one of one, you know. Um, God gave me an, uh, an amazing talent, an amazing reach and height and abilities to move in the ring, abilities that I see a lot of fighters are lacking. And honestly, like everything I say doesn't mean shit. But, you know, you guys will see when I fight, you know, what I'm about. It's my baby Divine here. Uh, she's a month old now. I just love coming home and holding her and uh, her sleeping on her, on her daddy. And we also have Clyde here. <laughs> we, we've been having Clyde, but he's our big boy. Before my daughter was here, was, I was all boxing. It was, it was only boxing, that's all I lived for, that's all I would think about. And uh, and, and now it's kind of more of a balance, you know. I've, my whole life changed, basically, you know, I'm, I'm not on myself, I'm not doing this for, for me anymore, I'm doing this for my daughter, for my family. And, um, and that's honest, honestly what it's all about for me now. But of course, you know, boxing is, is always my, my number one that I have to focus on, and, and family. It's just, it's been crazy. <laughs> this is a lot to think about. Boxing is always going to be here, you know. I'm always boxing. I'm always gonna gonna be that boxer and that that uh, that fighter that I'm destined to be. And yeah, it's just added motivation to get to, to where I want to be. The first time I came out here was uh, when I came to help David Benavidez for his camp, which was uh, almost five years ago now. David, after that camp, he wanted me for every camp. And then I just decided that I wanted to come over here like full time, like train here year around for all my fights, not just when David's in camp. And I, I made the decision. I came to Seattle. Uh, Benavidez uh, took care of me the first few months that I was here. You know, they looked out for me, took me in as one of their own. And my wife followed me. You know, she's so happy to have her here supporting me and uh, being in camp with me. Everything, you know, um, this, this is the biggest fight of my life. You know, I'm going to Las Vegas, defending my titles against a tough opponent, undefeated opponent, Sean McCallum. Uh, he's a good fighter. Uh, it looks like he has uh, he has some skills and some power, but um, it's nothing for me. You know, I've seen thousands of guys like him, and I just feel I'm on a way different level than he is. You know, I've, I feel amazing. You know, I feel every fight I'm getting better, I'm getting stronger, getting smarter. And I'm very confident in the work that I'm putting in this camp. I'm just excited to, to be back in Vegas, put on a, a great show, and uh, showing my dominance when I'm in the ring. I'm top 10 in the world already, so basically anyone in the top 10 who who would get me closer to that world title, you know, of course, um, there's a big fight that could be made with Edgar Berlanga. You know, they're, they're all great fighters, and, and, and that's the only way to get to the world championship fights. And, and I know that, uh, my team knows that, and, and uh, we, that's what we're getting ready for, for all the big fights. And 
and hopefully, you know, these, these fights get made and, and, and I get to show the world what, what, I'm, what I'm made of. Ball. You know, I can feel it. You know, the next year, the year after that, I, I will be world champion. Thank you for all the doors you give us. I'm just like when I carry him. Let's see how she goes. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, come on. For Sky Nicholson, she gets a chance to become Australia's latest boxing superstar. A shot at the world title, the famous green and gold WBC belt against ranked number two fighter Sarah Marfood. I think we'll pack up boxing. The first thing they give up is skipping. I hate skipping because they've done it so many times. Mm. She didn't like it. Yeah. She didn't do it for the first couple of fights, did you? I said, don't you skip Sky? Because I can. I just don't <laughs> like it. She said, what? Get skipping. <laughs> Everyone else done it, my said, Muhammad Ali done it, Sugar Ray Robinson, Sugar Ray Lennon, they all done it, so you've got to do it. It's so boring. She's now. I feel like time goes so slow. Like, if you think a boxing round feels long, when you're boxing, yeah. skipping feels like triple the time. I feel like my part's already been written for me. I'm, I'm living my destiny. and It's a nice way to feel, it's a nice way to live. Pound for pound, baby. Pound for pound, number one. I'm coming for the spot. I feel like I've said from the start of my career, the better the opposition in front of me, the better Sky Nicholson you're gonna see. And I really proved that in the Wild Heart fight. Lucy Wild Heart doesn't get stopped. So to stop her, I felt like it was a really good statement win. And I, I feel like that was just the, the start of, of some really big statements that are gonna be made, um, especially in my next few fights. What was she saying to you? <laughs> she said, um, you're a much better fighter than me. <laughs> I actually felt really bad. Um, no, she said, you're, you're, you're a great fighter. You're a much better fighter than me. And I said, thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you for, for fighting me. Because obviously um, it's, been, it's been frustrating. I've been wanting to fight top girls and there hasn't been a lot of interest back. So to even have that fight with Lucy Wildheart, I was grateful for that opportunity to, to show the world what I could do. When I decided to go all in on my pro career, fighting for the world title, that was the plan. I feel like I've been ready to fight for the world title for a lot longer than having to wait till now, but I'm more than ready now. I think we've fought all different styles of opponents, southpaws, aggressive fighters, counterboxers, taller, lankier opponents, shorter, stockier opponents. So I feel like I'm, I'm ready for anything. I definitely won't be settling for for one world title, so it's going to be the start of, a, of a, a bigger journey. Multiple weight world champion, undisputed, all of that stuff. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, yo. <laughs> jab, step back in. Yeah, jab, step back in. Um, I don't want to say Serrano is scared of me. I wouldn't think that about her, but I do think that Serrano and her team know that my style is wrong for her that it's going to be a hard night in the office for her. I think I have a far superior boxing IQ and boxing brain. And I, I think she knows deep down that she's very, she's, she would struggle in that fight with me. I want to just keep proving my legacy and proving that I'm the best and I'm going to keep beating the best girls and I'm going to keep beating whoever they put in front of me. Since I couldn't fight Serrano for this belt, I'm fighting the next best that I could possibly fight. She's number two in the world in Sarah Marfood. Her only loss is against Serrano. She actually took three rounds off Serrano as well. She won't be taking three rounds off me. The boxing sessions, it's all stuff I love. I love it. If you didn't love it, it'd be a very, very hard sport. I mean, it's a hard sport when you do love it, so it'd be a very hard sport if you didn't love boxing. I'm in there against a world-class girl and you're gonna see a world-class Sky Nicholson. I think on paper, it's a quite even, even match, a pretty 50-50 fight, so may the best go in. And the new. Do I have to say the whole thing or just and the new? Yeah, I thought so. 
and the new. One take wonder. One take wonder. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, nice <laughs> The chase for world greatness continues for Galau Yafai as he steps up again in Las Vegas. The big names awaits as he looks at his shot at the world title in 2024. It's quite a, an introduction to the pro game. You know, we can talk about your amateur accolades all we want. As you can tell us, the pro game is completely different, right? Yeah, it is different, you know. Uh, obviously, it's longer rounds, a lot tougher. But that's a difference I've found, don't I? Um, but it's boxing. To me, it's boxing. You know, getting there and I have a fight. It's a little bit longer and the gloves are a little bit smaller. But it's just a fight to me. I, I just gotta get through them all. Get through them all. Get to the top as quick as I can. Because people are impatient, and I'm a little bit as well. To be fair, I don't want to put a down on it, but it don't really matter to me ratings. No one's gonna say, "Galau, you're ranked top five in the WBC." When I finish my career, it's over. I'm gonna be world champion, or I'm not. So that's the main thing for me, is being world champion. Um, but it's nice to be ranked up quite high. People want me to fight the top boys now. I've had five fights. I, I could jump in now with the top boys, but I don't want to jump, jump in with the top boys and not have the experience. People will always say, oh, you shouldn't be fighting him, you should be fighting him, you should be fighting this guy. People will just say anything, so, you know, got to do what I'm doing, get to the top and then beat them guys too. I need to get that, I need to get experience. I'm my dad could beat the top boys, but I, I want to give myself the best chance. I don't want to go in there and fight them too soon and yep. just just be too short, do you know what I mean? Um, but saying that, I'm probably still enough to beat the top boys. April 6, Las Vegas. Tune in live on The Zone as our young guns look for another step towards greatness. Good work with a right hand. There's big statements to be made on April 6, and you're going to see a world-class Sky Nicholson. And the new. I'm getting better, I'm getting stronger. This is the biggest fight of my life. This is the Richardson Hitchens division. I'm here and I'm just knocking at their door. <laughs>